In one corner is Therese, the knockout Erin. In the other, her opponent Joanne, the Tigress Hutchins. We're not just getting in there to throw punches for fun. We're doing it for a great cause. The two women were among the 22 women and men who volunteered to box during this year's Long Island Fight for Charity at the Hilton, Long Island. Therese is a breast cancer survivor and involved with Women Who Kick, a nonprofit group that stemmed out of the organization Moms Who Kick, founded by Joanne in 2008. My organization, Moms Who Kick, is a breast cancer charity promoting physical fitness and proper nutrition to lead a healthy lifestyle. Um, and, you know, why did I start it? Because my mother is a breast cancer survivor. She was diagnosed in 2008. My aunt is also a breast cancer survivor. Those are the two first in my family to be diagnosed with it and so I wanted to do something to make a difference. So many women wanted to get involved. We realized it was time to, to branch it out and open it up to all women as pretty much everyone at some point in time has been touched in, by cancer, whether it's breast cancer or otherwise, one way or another. You know, and hopefully one day there'll be a men who kick. These two tough women who kick wanted to get involved in the 10th annual event to help other charities on the island. It is absolutely amazing. The fact that they've been doing this for 10 years and that it's a sellout crowd almost every year and that's dedicated towards helping Long Islanders who are in need, to me it just doesn't get better than that. Long Island Fight for Charity was founded in 2003 by three friends, Jeff Cohen, Matt Silver and Jamie Austin. Jeff has been boxing since he was a young boy and presented the idea to have a boxing event to raise money for the nonprofit group Family Residences and Essential Enterprises or FREE. The organization assists and provides services to those with special needs. That first year there were 700 people in attendance and they raised $36,000. Since then the annual event has grown tremendously. It's regular people, people like you, like, like her, like him, they, they, they want to do something out of the box and really interesting for charity. So. This is, you know, they train, they have to train, they have to fundraise, so you're taking time away from your family. You're, you're going out there and you're hitting everybody up, you know, for money. And on top of that, you have to go to a gym for a certain amount of training time and spend time learning how to punch and be punched. So it's really, um, it's a huge commitment that these people make. It's a great opportunity to raise money for local people. At the same time, do something that I've never had an opportunity to do. This was Michael, the closer Haltman's first time participating in the event. He and all of the boxers have been training and preparing for the fight for the past six months. Jumping ropes, sparring, hitting the heavy bag, uh, trying to run and just lose some weight, which has been great. I started out my training at around 242 and I'm down to about 226. You don't have to put your gloves on and get into a ring to fight for charity. You just got to buy a ticket, volunteer, make a donation, and the community, there's over 100 volunteers that are here tonight, so the community really comes out and they love the event. Since the event was founded, they have helped more than 40 charities and have raised about $100,000, including nearly $300,000 from this year's event. It's about helping others, it's about doing the right thing, it's about people dedicating six months out of their lives to better other people and raising money for three major charities on Long Island and then once they raise a certain amount of money they can dedicate the money to other charities that are their favorites on Long Island. There's three staple charities, uh, Family Residences and Essential Enterprises, the Genesis School which is for uh, adults and young adults and children who are diagnosed with autism, um, wonderful organization, and then the Long Island Community Chest is the organization that I went to and said look I want to do this event, I'd like to do it with you guys and that's where Jamie and Matt came in and the community chest helps Long Islanders with short-term issues. So if, if you're a no normal family and you have some horrible happening in your life that just not kind of knocks you off the grid and you know bills are mounting up and this and that and we could kind of help you get back to being a more normal life, tax paying citizens, not into that's what we do. Alex El Toro Gallego raised about twelve thousand dollars this year. Ten thousand went to Long Island Fight for Charity and the other 2,000 to his charity of choice, the Hispanic Cultural Center. This is Alex's second time participating. He fought back in 2007. There's so many ways that we can always give. This allows you to really put everything in there. Spiritual, mental, emotional, financial. So you really can really get yourself involved. The event consisted of 11 matches 
and each match ended in a tie. You know, they call it Strong Island, and it's for a reason. Tonight, 24 boxers laced up their gloves and took to the ring, all to benefit Long Island charities. Virus One's Kevin Vesey has more. In the ring, they call her Rohamed Ali. But Roseanne Bayevich is no professional boxer. In fact, she had never even set foot in a ring until last March. I've been going to Glen Cove Boxing Club three to four nights a week. Tonight, the Melville-based attorney competed in her first ever boxing match as part of the 10th annual Long Island Fight for Charity. This is no joke. They, you really fight. You really box. It's it's going to be a good fight. None of them are professional boxers. They're regular people like you and I. Some of them are in sales. We have lawyers. We have a doctor we've had in the past, accountants. Co-founder Matt Silver says this year's event has raised almost $300,000. And since getting started 10 years ago, the white-collar boxing competition has collected more than $1 million for Long Island charities. It's all about doing the right thing and paying it forward. And that's what everyone here is involved in. And while it feels great to help out nearby charities, a lot of these boxers tell me that the event has also helped them. Boxers like Joe, the limo king of the ring, Palumbo, who, like his name implies, owns a limousine company. Joe weighed almost 200 pounds when he first stepped into the boxing gym in March. I weighed in this morning at 166, uh, lost 30 some odd pounds, and uh, Feel great. And no matter how the matches turn out, these fighters tell me the true winners are the charities that will benefit from all of their hard work and in some cases, a little bit of pain. I know that all the money people donated are going to a great cause and whether it's just to see me get hit in the face, you know, I, at least I can help raise money. In Melville, Kevin VC, Fios, One News. Uh, tonight, where uh, 24 local businessmen and women are climbing into the ring to raise money for charity through boxing. Started 10 years ago, uh, I really wanted to do something with my sport, and I spoke to two of my friends, Matt and Jamie, uh, Matt Silver and Jamie Austin, and uh, I asked them if they would help me market an event where I was going to box. They said they would fight each other, started chasing each other around the table, and we called the local reporter, and Fight for Charity was born. My goal would be when I'm, you know, 60 years old to be able to turn around and see, like, Fight for Charity still doing really well. And this year was a huge, huge testament. It's 10-year anniversary. I wasn't involved much in the, in the, in the planning of it. it was, uh, I, I was traveling, and, and it's the largest crowd we've ever had. And the Long Island community, our volunteers, sponsors, board, everybody has really just stepped it up. It's unbelievable. Better event than I could have ever done. Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. We are at the Glen Cove Boxing Gym tonight in Glen Cove, New York. Uh, I'm taking place tonight to training session. Uh, training for the Long Island Fight for Charity. Long Island Fight for Charity is an event uh, that sponsors three different charities, kids with autism, uh, families that could use some help, you know, that down maybe having financial hard times. Uh, my brother and I and Camelot Limos are very, very big in giving to charities, but we've been very blessed. So we really feel like givers gain. And when you help people out, it comes back to you. I started March. I walked into the gym. I was a pudgy 193 pounds. And, uh, Billy and Frank were the two trainers, and, um, and Fig, who is Pedro, they all started working with me. And uh, they told me, by the time fight comes, you're going to be 160 pounds, which I haven't been since high school. I've always been an athlete, always played sports. I don't think anybody realizes how hard it is boxing as a sport when you're actually training for it. Everything about being a good boxer is endurance. Um, the best boxers in the world are the hardest trainers. The Floyd Mayweathers of the world, who are just that good, those world-class fighters, are in the best shape. When you're punching, you're on offense, and your opponent's on defense. When you stop punching, 
your opponents on offense, you're on defense. So most importantly is build your stamina, build your wind, and be in condition to fight every minute of every round. The night of the fight, there's about 12 to 1,500 people in the arena, so they're you know, really getting you prepared for not just being able to fight in the ring, but being able to deal with that many people and being on such a big stage. Look at names. Look at Boxing gloves. Duke Castiglione has been begging for it. He's about to get it. Come on, let's go over to the demo area. Come oh, with me, Rosanna. Now? Come, yeah, let's just do it. Listen, are we, are we? Are you guys having a fight tonight in Long Island, Melbourne, Long Island? They're having a. Ooh, God, what's wrong there? Special event for charity. It's like Long Island fights for charity. Yes. Long Island fights for charity. That's Jeff Cohen over there. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Good morning. Nice How to see you. you. Nice How's to see everything? You too. Nice to see you. Good morning. I'd love to shit you. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> you no bell is ringing yet. No. So I want a good, clean fight. Stop hitting before the bell. <laughs> Jeff, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having What's me. What's going to happen tonight? Uh, tonight, 24 business people are going to get together. They have already put on the gloves, trained, and fundraised, and they're going to fight for charity. Very good, very yep. good. What are some of the charities? Uh, the National Foundation for Human Potential, uh, the Long Island Community Chest, and also the Genesis School. Jeff, are there some rules and regulations? Anybody could get in the ring and start throwing punches? Not tonight. Anybody okay. can get in and uh, box for charity. They just have to sign up in advance. They have to become a USA certified boxer. They have to train a certain amount of oh. hours. It is a, they have to fundraise. It's a huge, huge commitment for these folks for what they're doing for a very out-of-the-box event. Well, those rules sound very involved. We're going to blow them all off today here on Good Day New York. Do me a favor. Bring your team in here. We want to meet these guys. Okay. This is uh, Frank. How you doing, Frank? Trainer. How are you? This is Sal with uh, Hi, Sal. Allure. Okay. And uh, Roseanne. And Sal What's is also... Rosanna? 
Roseanne. 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 Yeah. I, 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 yeah, with I can relate. Sal's with Allure. He's our key sponsor this year. Not only did he put his uh, put his company involved, but he put his money where his mouth is, and he's climbing into the ring. Sal, have you ever boxed before? No. So why did you want to do this now? Uh, it's just, it's a great thing, what they do, and raising money for some good causes and putting myself on the line, inspiring my people. I'm oh. sure your family wanted to box you every now and then, um, <laughs> but uh, are you, uh, uh, are they okay with this? Yeah, my, my mom's not so happy, my daughter, but my, uh, my sons are happy, and my brother's they, they can't wait to see me in the ring. That's All right, so well, funny. pump up the Rocky music if we got it. I want to get into the mood, and quite frankly, I want to knock Duke Castiglione out. Oh. All right. All right, listen. What? Jeff, we need to have some rules here, okay? This should be a good, clean fight, nothing below the belt. Can we hit the face area? Absolutely. No. Absolutely. <laughs> and we have that scene from Anchorman, too, Jeff, remember? do we have a... Uh, wait, we have one of those, uh, those wait, you girls? Oh, no. Come on, Inez, come on in. Bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Hey. Hoorah. Jeff, right. do you want to say anything to them? Block. 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 All right, who's going to keep saying? Who's got the ding? Duke is going to run out of gas. Should, should we wear headgear? Don't we have one of those dings? So they Wait, you got the helmets? The... You want a helmet? Ding. All right, we'll keep it below the face. Here you go. Here we go. Yeah, ready? Don't keep touch the hair. <laughs> oh, God. What's your jam? What's your jam? What's your jam? Keep your hands up, Greg. Above keep the belt. Keep your hands up. That's it. That's it. Didn't we say below the face? <laughs> I slipped. You just dislocated my jaw. Are you okay? <laughs> all right, you gotta keep going. Jeff, all right, tell Jeff. So no. that's why, that's I... why people have to train for months. Yes, keep okay. safe and get in shape. Come over here, Duke. Go on the other side. That was great. Okay, th th you thought so? Good job. Okay, really great. I, I gotta talk to my girl here. Really I great. need another girl here. Hey, tell by me. the way, Duke, you didn't win. <laughs> I want more. Come on. The right hand slipped. All right, talk okay. to Roseanne for a second. Okay, Roseanne, tell me what your involvement is in, in all this. I've been uh, training since March to fight Wendy, the sweetest sin, and I'm um, just ready to raise some money. Uh, really? You want to box? You want to get hurt? No, no, I don't want to, but it's for a great cause, and I've had so <laughs> much fun, and I've made so many friends, so it's really been It's good exercise, right? It sure is, and they lose a lot of weight doing it. Of the training for the past three, four months. Are you helping with the training? What, uh, what's yes, your I'm from the Glencoe Boxing Club. Yeah. Uh, in Glencoe, Long Island. And uh, like I said, they've been training for the past three, four, five months since January, some of them. Let me ask you something. Right. You saw these two box, right? <laughs> How, do How we do? How we do? The, the great is just got to keep your hands up. All right. Your hands oh, are no, down. Hit the bell. You hit gotta the bell. Get in there. You gotta... I'm a referee here. Yeah. Right, we're we're referee. Hold on. We're on. Oh, gee, this is not gonna end well. No, oh. it's not. Keep your hands up. Keep it's all fun and games. Yeah. 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 It's all fun and games until Greg Kelly gets hurt. Okay, that's it. Break him up. 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 Hold him back. Hold him back. Okay. Too bad you guys aren't doing this for charity. Next year, maybe. Next year. That's maybe. right. Yeah. All right, yeah. Plenty of room. All right. <laughs> you got me uh, back. I got hit in the eye. All right, that's it. That's it. Pity the fool. All right, all right, that's it. That's good. I think that's good. Your microphone's off. You really got into this one. Roseanne, you're next. Oh. Put him up. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's great. We'll put all the information on our website. Once again, if people want to um, donate, how do they do that? They can go right on to uh, LI Fight for Charity. Um, unfortunately, this year, they cannot come down to the event. We are 100% sold out. Good for you. So, uh, please, please, there, you know, you, you just, you don't have to throw punches to fight for charity. You just got to get online and make a donation. It's LIFightforCharity.org. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank, Thank you very much. Hurt, no. Thank you. All right. Thank it kind of gets all your frustrations out. Do you guys feel good now? You're... <laughs> <laughs> I think that right hand off. You got me back. You got me uh, back. What do you say? One Mike, more. Mike, 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 help me out here. I think no more. <laughs>Robert Vanacori had a rough childhood as a self-described street kid, but the 51-year-old channeled his experiences 
into a constructive business that helps people get in shape. I'm the owner of Fitness Through Boxing, an establishment that I started about 15 years ago. And what I do is I train people to get in condition using a boxing format. What time is it? Have time! Have time, baby! Put it to work! Another series of one two. Vanacori seemed to be headed down a troubled path until one fateful day when his life would change forever. March 8, 1971, that to me was the biggest boxing event of all times. That's when uh, Joe Frazier boxed Muhammad Ali the first time. And with all the political views and all the other things going on at that time, um, Joe Frazier was my hero. He came in as uh, kind of as the underdog and the, um, you know, the black sheep of the fight. Ali was the big mouth. And when Frazier won that fight, I just got captured by um, the sport of boxing. And ever since then, that's all that I really focus on. I never really watched basketball, the World Series. Um, Super Bowl, I don't know who won that. Vanacori says the demand for boxing-related exercise has been steady, since there's nothing quite like punching to relieve stress. There's something about hitting either the, the hand pads or the mitts that's, um, you know, you, you, you're euphoric to some degree because, I mean, you could ride a bicycle, you could run, you could lift weights, but there's nothing like really letting your aggression out with hitting a bag or hitting a, hitting a mitt and having um, a trainer tell you the proper way to do it. The gym got its start 15 years ago at a different location on Jericho Turnpike. But back then, Vanacori really wasn't looking to train average Joes. When I wasn't training myself, I would get some neighborhood kids and just show them, um, you know, how to box. And at the time, I was looking really for, um, for the next, um, you know, Mike Tyson or somebody like that. But then as time went on, a couple other individuals came, to, came my way and they seen that it was a good way to get in shape. So since I loved doing it and I could see the results of somebody getting in shape using the boxing format, that became my passion. That passion for helping people get better is never more evident than when a client with great potential steps into the ring. Every once in a while I do come across an individual like Sal Farrell who does the, the fight for charity and he's taking it very seriously. We train for, I would say, the better part of six weeks the way a professional fighter trains where he um, does his road work in the morning, he comes in and sees me, we touch base, I give him some nutrition tips. Came in the first day, came in to meet him, I was like, you know what, he's a good guy. He hurt me, man, he worked me hard. <laughs> but once I started to really get into the groove with it, I realized this guy's perfect for me. You know, he's my age, he's in phenomenal shape, he doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk. But I love the approach he takes, and I love the way he is with the kids. He's inclusive, I think he runs a great outfit over at Fitness Through Boxing, and I'm gonna to continue to go there. He's getting me ready for this fight because it's not just a matter of going in the ring and, and fighting. There's conditioning and there's technique. And I don't think people truly respect what a boxer does until they go out there and they do what I've been doing for the last couple of months. The technique combined with the conditioning it's tremendous. Vanacori's philosophy is to approach boxing as a performance rather than a fight, a mindset he never would have adopted as a kid. After climbing back into the ring to box police officers in 2009, Vanacori decided it was time to launch a full-blown comeback. I used to be a little bit of a rough kid, a street kid, so when I got the opportunity to box an officer and beat him up and don't get arrested for it, I took full advantage of that. And um, from then on, the spark just came back to the point where I see that I'm in condition and I can still do it, so I still do it. You know, I'm not punchy, I'm not getting hit, I'm not a, you know, my skills are a, a top notch. You know, for a guy my own age, anyone that gets in the ring with me is not gonna be able to handle me. Aside from his boxing career, Vanacori's business had expanded too. He needed a larger space, and that's where Sal Farrow, owner of one of Long Island's most notable home improvement companies, was there to help. Robert, as he grew, he needed to get to a, another location, and when he came in here and I got to know him, I noticed he needed a couple of things here. So I've been kind of helping him along the way, you know, putting in a bathroom with a shower, and just doing things to help him kind of move into his new, uh, his new location a little more comfortably. Vanacori says he puts up with the headaches of running the business to continue living the dream that started when he was just a kid. This is my dream job. You know, um, with your own business, there's a lot of headaches and ups and downs and everything like that. But when I really look at it, I'm living the dream, you know. The dream is alive and going. And having guys like Sal in my corner, you know, he did a lot of help for me with the new location. And um, he's just a super guy. It makes you see that life is worth living. For more information, visit fitnessthroughboxing.com. For Push Paws in East Northport, this is Louis Dane. Sal Farrow is not a boxer. 
I am the president and CEO of a major construction company here on Long Island, and we service the, uh, the whole tri-state area. 85% uh, 80, of my work is Long Island. This is uh, my backyard. The 51-year-old business owner had never stepped into a ring until three months ago when he began to train for the Long Island Fight for Charity. Right now I'm sweating and I'm just recovering from a pretty tough workout. Uh, I'm uh, preparing for a fight, uh, really a boxing match. Uh, one thing I learned in getting involved with this uh, Fight for Charity is it's a boxing match. A fight is different. And I'm preparing for this boxing match on November 25th where I'll be in the ring boxing for charity. The Fight for Charity, one of Long Island's largest philanthropy events, is now in its 10th year. The wonderful thing about uh, Fight for Charity is they allow you not only to help raise money for the community chest, the Genesis School, the foundations that they're providing for, they allow you to also give half the money you raise to the charity that you're involved with. And I'm very heavily involved with the Clark Gillies Foundation. Clark Gillies is a Hall of Fame uh, hockey player, played with the Islander through, Islanders through the four Stanley Cups. Great ambassador for Long Island uh, and a great guy who put together a foundation many years ago. And we raise money and we do things uh, for children. You know, whether it be helping build a school for uh, kids with autism, uh, helping put together a pediatric emergency uh, room at uh, Huntington Hospital. Um, uh, we, there's a school for uh, kids that are going through cancer. Just really great causes that, that have needs. And um, this charity allows you not only to support them, but to support some of the things you're involved with. So I jumped on board wholeheartedly and haven't looked back, other than when I'm working out. <laughs> Farrow has come a long way since he began training for fight night. Trainer Robert Vanacori calls him a natural. Every once in a while I do come across an individual like Sal Farrow who does the, um, the fight for charity and he's taking it very seriously. We train for, I would say, the better part of six weeks the way a professional fighter trains where he um, does his road work in the morning, he comes in and sees me, we touch base, I give him some nutrition tips, and um, we're just gearing him up for the event. Conditioning is um, the biggest uh, component of boxing, you have to be in condition, and uh, Sal drummed himself into great shape. Whoa, I didn't know you were here. Farrow runs one of Long Island's most visible home improvement businesses, having appeared on multiple episodes of ABC's Extreme Makeover Home Edition, and more recently, Spike TV's Bar Rescue. We helped reconstruct a bar restaurant in uh, Far Rockaway that was devastated from Hurricane uh, Superstorm Sandy. And uh, we've, uh, you know, we've really focused on doing things attached to TV that have an outcome that makes a difference in somebody's life. No stranger to philanthropic endeavors, Farrow jumped at the chance to get involved with something completely unique. Now boxing comes along totally different because not only am I raising money, not only has my team come together to raise money, but we're doing it in a way where I'm putting myself my face, my body, my time out there. And if that doesn't inspire people, I don't know what will. There's a million golf outings out there. There's a million galas and dinners. There's only one boxing tournament for money. On Long Island, I know about, fight for charity. While ultimately, Farrow is putting himself in the ring, he says it's been a true team effort to make his fundraising campaign a success. My employees have done a tremendous job of going out there, letting people know what's happening, and, and helping us raise money. This isn't about me getting in shape and going in the ring and boxing somebody for fun. The key to this is raising money for these important charities. And my employees, my team, and my family, they have been just, just tremendous in supporting me and uh, helping me get to this point. His community-oriented attitude is what has made Pharaoh so successful in business. And it's that same attitude that he hopes will define his legacy. We all have a social obligation to everybody around us. Um, you know, I don't want a, my legacy to be, you know, Sal Farrow, great businessman. I want my legacy to be Sal Farrow, uh, great family man, great humanitarian. That's more important to me than great businessman. You, you could sometimes just write a check and donate, and we do that. But I feel so much better when I get involved, whether it be Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, where we got involved, we built these houses for these wonderful families that we still have relationships with, or it's Fight for Charity, that I'm in the gym three days a week, boxing and getting my head bashed in by the trainer, I'll be in the ring, there'll be 1,200 people looking, and I'll be able to say, you know what, not only did I raise the most money ever raised by the charity, uh, I'm doing it and I'm getting involved myself. For more information, visit lifightforcharity.org. For Push Paws in East Northport, this is Louis Dane. Tonight, Long Islanders are getting ready to rumble. They are lacing up their boxing gloves to help Long Islanders in need. The 10th Long Island 
fight for charity is tonight. Boxers, including these first-timers, have been training for weeks here at the Glen Cove Boxing Club and other gyms across the island getting ready for tonight's main event. It's a great way to give back to charity, and you can have some fun doing it. I mean, how many times in your life do you get to get up in front of 1,200 people and fight someone? You know, it's a great experience. Oh, I'm very nervous. Everyone I know is going to be there, so it's very nervous. But we've raised so much money, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It is tonight at the Hilton in Melville. I will be ringside judging, so hope to see you there. It's a good time, too. Yeah, it is. They have It's a big networking yeah. event, too. There's a lot of people. You, you get to see a lot of people that you know. What yeah. does that mean you'll be judging? I, I, like, hold up a sign, and I say who the winner <laughs> is with a panel of other people. I don't know. I'm really nervous about it, actually. I don't you know. We have a very, qualified, a... a very qualified <laughs> judge here, people. So get ready for as some really fair scores. No blood, I'm going to be like this won. the whole time. <laughs>
Um, but I think uh, Layla Ali is a prime example. She's extremely feminine, but she's strong and she's independent. Um, and I think that's kind of a, a great way to describe boxers. It's a, it's a really an individual sport, and you have to be strong and have a sense of self-confidence. And I think that translates into your day-to-day -day life. So it's a, it's a great sport for women. The main achievement that we're looking for is just to raise awareness of the entire charity and the event itself and to get a lot of people excited about it. Um, so the fundraising aspect is a, is a big deal and a big focus, but it's really just to have a good time, um, to put on a good show for the audience, you know, a good fight, a fair fight, and to have a lot of fun. Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Ten years ago, by myself and two other gentlemen, uh, one of them was taking some white collar boxing, and uh, he said, "I think we should do an event on Long Island. They have to raise a minimum of five thousand dollars, and we have people tonight that have raised as much as seventy thousand dollars. The minimum a boxer raises is five. Everyone went above the minimum. They've been training for six months. They're ready to go. They're excited. It's going to be an amazing night helping charities right here on Long Island." charities that we support are the Foundation for Human Potential, the Genesis School, and the Long Island Community Chest. And we have raised over a million dollars to date. Never thought it would get this big, but this is a unique event that no one on Long Island does, and everybody waits every year in earnest for this event, and it is super exciting tonight. Amazing, Long Island Fight for Charity, 10th anniversary. Feeling awesome, feeling great tonight. Uh, Team Camelot's raised about $22,000 for the charity. Uh, I've dropped since we spent close another 10, 15 pounds. I'm down to 167. I weighed in tonight. My opponent's 163. Uh, we feel really confident about it. I mean, obviously, if some butterflies, you step into a ring, but um, good confidence. It's like a dream, it's like living your own movie. You know, it's 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 getting to be with, with your little boy and your brother, your, your two best guys in your life, and, and actually going into the ring. It's like a dream. The last month, making weight was tough. You know, you have to make weight and cut down on your dieting. Uh, my trainer, Pedro, was amazing. You know, kept me sparring two, three times a week. Uh, a lot of running, you know, running twice a day towards the end. But uh, it, it almost became like a drug. It became like a drug to you. You wanted to do it, and uh, you start to feel invincible. You know, you, you can't wait to do it again. I'm ready to put on a good show. <laughs> Lost your cool a little bit? Um, listen, like any self-respecting Hispanic, you gotta hit hit one time to make sure it's real. So when he caught me good, then I was ready. And he gave me a three count that I didn't need. I didn't know what it was about. So I said, what are we doing a three count for? And he didn't like me touching his hand and he stopped it. Uh, I, that, I was just ready. I was ready. I was warmed up. This was one of those times that I could really put everything into it. A lot of times you go to do a charity thing, you write a check. Here you gotta put your body, your heart, your soul, your spirit, and write the check. So it was the complete package, and that made me do it. I'm feeling uh, very enthusiastic, excited. I'm looking forward to my match. It's going to be an incredible evening. I 
raised almost $10,000 for charity, so I'm so grateful to everybody's support and encouragement and enthusiasm and, and trying to help me reach my goal. I mean, boxing is really intense and um, it's very physical, so I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. I just had my 46th birthday. I feel awesome. Hopefully 46 is the new 30. I do want to set the tone and set the pace. So I plan on starting the match and, uh, and forcing it into my direction. You know, it goes so fast. Like you train and you prepare for months. And then you get in there and it's over in a blink of an eye. I definitely love the training. I'm going to keep doing the, um, the boxing training. It's awesome. It never gets boring. It's a great workout. There are no losers in the Long Island fight for charity. Every single person that steps into that ring is a winner.